Yes, tonight, I believe we're going to hear a word from the Lord, not from me. I believe we're going to get a word that's just for you, not for the person next to you. God is going to speak to you tonight. And I believe he's, as he's speak, spoken to me and to all of us, we're going to learn tonight a very important message that's going to help us to grow and to be more like Christ. Who's ready to learn? If you're ready, go ahead and high five your neighbor and say, I'm ready. You guys may be seated. Man, can we give it up for this awesome worship team? My goodness. That drummer was going crazy. So awesome. I want to say welcome everyone to our Wednesday night revival service. Give yourself a round of applause for being here tonight. Our Wednesday nights are a little more, you know, it's a little extra dose of the Holy Ghost, as they say. My name is Christian. I'm one of the pastors here at the church and I do several different things here in the church, but really my main mission, my main heart, my main goal is, is to love people. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. And I just want to give just honor where honor is due. I want to give honor to our pastor, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa. Can we give them a shout out? Who poured so much into me, so much into us. And also to our assistant pastors, Pastor Robert and Veronica Cuencas. So right over here. Come on, let's really hear from them. They do so much for this church. Thank you, pastors. Thank you so much. Tonight, we're going to get a word. This is part two of a message that was started last week. And it's called Be Salty. Someone say, Be Salty. Now, I don't mean have an attitude. But we're going to talk about what scripture says about salt. Before I do, I would like to pray just one more time. Father, you know my heart, Lord. Tonight, I'm only interested, Lord, in saying what you want to be said. Father, none of us are here to hear man-made opinions. We want the truth. We want the word. We want something that's going to help us to grow closer to you, to become more like you, and to share your love to others throughout this world. Speak tonight in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight, again, like I said, we're going to be talking about a, a message that we started last week that was called Be Salty. And if you didn't catch last week, you can catch it on our YouTube page. But I want to reference an article that I read this week. You know, Pastor Marco talked a little bit last week about the conditions right now of our world and how many things in our world are, are starting to uh, even the values of Christianity are beginning to blend with the values of the world. I read an article this week that was called Fake Christianity. And it was an article that talked about how we as Christians today have begun to adopt different ideas or philosophies to kind of look like Christianity but aren't actually Christianity. This is what the article said. It said, watered down, feel good, fake Christianity is the most popular worldview in the, night, in the United States today. The purpose of life, according to this philosophy, is to do good. And everything is supposed to be geared to making me feel good about myself. Everything in the world. And ult ultimately to make me happy. Christians who have adopted this philosophy have elevated personal definitions of right and wrong above any objective standard of truth, including the Bible. Christians who embrace this idea are hesitant to salt the culture. How can anyone pass judgment if everyone's just trying to be happy? The only sin, according to this philosophy, is getting in the way of someone else's personal truth. I could sum all of that up to say this. We've traded in. We made an exchange. We took this word that God blessed us and gave us, the life source to our spiritual lives. We looked in it, we read it, we liked some of it, and we didn't like a lot of it. So instead of walking according to the scripture, we've traded it in for a man-made philosophy. And we said, I like that option better. We've made Christianity like a big menu. And we get to pick and choose and custom make our orders. 
Jesus, I like this about your scripture, but I don't really like this part, so I'm just going to go ahead and veer away from that one. I like that, you know, that, you know, you say you like to bless us, and I like the life that we get to have an abundant life. Those things are great, but not necessarily the part where you say to pick up my cross and follow you. I, I don't really want to follow you, Jesus, but I want what you got. I want the peace, I want the joy, but I don't really want to live for you. Now, I know this is, I know we came out the gate heavy. <laughs> but church, listen, I believe this is a message that God has for us tonight. Because I believe this is going to help us to learn that our real purpose in life is to fulfill his mission for us. Not to live a, a faulty standard of what the world wants us to live, but to live what he has for us. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. This is the main portion of scripture that we're going to be studying. Jesus is talking. He just finished the most important sermon, the most, uh, the most, one of the most famous sermons in the world, the Sermon on the Mount. And he continues and he says, you are the salt of the earth. Someone say, I'm the salt. I'm the salt. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Just some review from last week, Pastor Marco taught us, uh, we, we learned that the, the disciples of Jesus are the salt of the earth. As a disciple of Jesus, someone say, I'm a disciple. As disciples of Jesus, we are the salt of the earth. The main purpose of being godly is to cause other unbelievers to believe in Jesus. Our godly lives will season them or prepare them to hear and believe the good news message. Our lifestyle, the way we live and who we are, it salts the earth. So Jesus teaching us that this is our purpose. Here's a quote from very wise man. A godly life is a salty life. Marco Garcia. See, our godly and salty lives, they can cause people to glorify God. And we'll learn more about that in a minute. Another point of review, which we're going to talk a lot about tonight, is we can lose our flavor. We can lose our flavor. Now, some of us are, you know, I'm, I'm 20. I just turned 29. So it's my last lap of the 20s. And um, I, I, when I was younger... And I'm sure those that, that are, I'm not going to say older than me, I'll say wiser than me, much more mature than I am, have been through this before. We are like on your last lap of your 20s or you're feeling the, you start to think the thoughts that all the older people used to think like when I was young. <laughs> I remember back in my day. Or man, you ain't never heard of this, huh? You ain't never heard of them, have you? You ain't never seen that show. I'm starting to say those things now. I feel like I'm losing my flavor. But that's not the same kind of thing we're talking about. We're talking about flavor. We're talking about our effectiveness in the kingdom. We're talking about our impact and our purpose to reach and fulfill what God has for us in this world. It's possible for us to lose our impact. Revelations 2, 2 verse 5 says, says, so remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior, seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. It's possible for us to lose our favor. And how do we lose our fav flavor? We're going to learn that tonight. But first, I want to talk about this. What is the purpose of being salty? What is the purpose of salt? Why must I be salty? Why is that so important for me? Number one, salt purifies Salt purifies. That word purify means this, to make clean from pollutants, to set free. In other words, Jesus has given us his word, his promises, his lifestyle, so that we can purify those who hear his message. See, when the words of Jesus are in our mouths, we get the same results that he has. When we speak what Jesus spoke, we get what he got. 
Look at John 15, 3. It says, you are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. So the first purpose of salt is it what? Purifies. Second purpose of salt, it's a preservative. It's a preservative. Salt, it, back in the day, the day day, none of our days, this is like ancient time, salt was extremely valuable and it was used to preserve food for thousands of years. It, it, and it, it prevented the meat from decaying or becoming foul or getting this foul uh, smell or smell, uh, taste. And it was a very extremely valuable resource in the time to keep things from decaying. It was a preservative. That word preserve means to keep alive, to save from decay. So without believers, someone say without me, without a salty disciple in this world, without us spreading the gospel and spreading the message of Jesus, then we leave this world to become more morally corrupt and decaying, to become worse than before. See, the duty of a Christian, of us, of you and me, is to keep, to preserve the love, the truth, the gospel message of Jesus Christ in this world. You know, if all of us stop preaching the gospel, if every Christian stopped preaching the gospel today, Christianity would cease to exist tomorrow. But our duty is to keep the gospel message, the hope alive that Jesus came, he died, and he resurrected so that he can set us free from our sin and he can make us whole again. The third thing that salt does is it fertilizes. Some would say fertilize. Again, in ancient times, sometimes small doses of salt would be used and be added to the soil in order to help produce greater crops. We're called to produce fruit in this world. We're called this salt to, make a, to produce things in this world. Look at Proverbs 11.30. It says, the fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life. And he who is wise captures humans li human lives. For God as a fisher of men, he gathers and receives them for eternity. So when we live uncompromised lives, salty lives, we win souls for Jesus. Your best message is your lifestyle. See, the way you talk is great. And I'm up here and I'm talking on a mic, but I can't have as much impact in your home than you can. And the greatest impact you can have is in your lifestyle. It's not in how eloquent you can speak. It's not how many fancy words you can say. It's not how many Christianese words you've memorized. It's in how you have translated the word, digested the word in your spirit and translated it into actions, into thoughts, into patterns, into behaviors. Jesus is calling us to salt. The, he's calling us the salt that produces the fruit of salvation in people's lives. We should live every day with this thought. The thought of winning others who may be watching us. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. This is a verse that was written for wise, but I think, it's, I think it's appropriate for any Christian. It says, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Well, I'm just kidding. That's not, let's not focus on the part. Next part. It says, then, someone say then. Then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak. Isn't that crazy? Your life can talk. Your actions have words. You know, you can say a lot more by what you do than in just what you say. Your lives can literally speak to people. The way you live, the way you think, the way you act, that it's talking all the time. And what this scripture is saying that your lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over. Did you know that we, this could be wives, it could be husbands, this could even be kids in the home tonight. That you can salt your home with your behavior. You can salt your home with your love. 
You can salt your home with your actions. You can salt your home even with what words you choose to say. You can salt your home with your choices. You can salt your home with how you react to someone that's a little bit edgy. See, we're, we're trying to get Pastor Marco to salt our home, but the reality is you're responsible for salting your own home. See, if we want our home to be a place where lives are being transformed and people are lifting the name of Jesus, then it's up to us, not in just what we say, you need to go to church, you need to do better, you need to, you need to get your act together. Man, I can't believe you see, you're still doing the same old thing. But no, rather than doing all of that, why don't we just look like Jesus? Why don't we start by living like him? Why don't we love like he loves? Why don't we forgive like he forgives? Why don't we stand up the way he stands up? Why don't we be pure like the way he's pure? Why don't we live for Jesus? See, salt, it fertilizes. It, 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 it's, it's our lifestyle that wins people for Jesus. Someone say, my lifestyle wins people to Jesus. And the fourth purpose of salt is it's used for flavor. Flavor with an A. I'm just kidding. See, so what it does, it makes food taste better or it kind of heightens the way food should, food should taste. And in the same way, a salty Christian is here to help people become everything that they're called to be. See, so when, it, when I'm a salty believer, I got flavor. I, I, you, can, you can tell when somebody is salty. Got a little flavor. I'm not dull. I don't blend in. You know, there's certain ingredients that just kind of blend in. Like, oh, what'd you put in that? The pie is great. Like, I put this, this, and this. And like, I didn't even taste none of that. It's kind of blended right in there. But salt kind of, it stands out. Gives some flavor. Tastes good. We got any cooks in here? Any, anybody like to grill some meat? You know, you got to marinate that meat. Mm. Hallelujah. Let it sit for 24 hours. Let it get all the way in. You know what I'm talking about. Whew. That's, like a, that's like rule number one as a preacher. Don't talk about food when you're preaching because that's where our minds go. But this is the point. We as believers, when we're salty, we add flavor. And anything that has flavor, it sticks out. It stands out. You can see it. Psalms 34, 8, it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You can taste it. You can see it. You know God is good. He is good. See, believers without salt, they don't really taste good. They don't really got flavor. It's kind of dull. Not only that, it's just like, they don't really make an impact. See, when I'm not salty, I just kind of blend in. I come to church, I, 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 you know, no, I do my thing. Then I go home and no one knows I'm a Christian. And my job, no one can see it. No one can taste it. No one can tell I got flavor. I'm just kind of blending right in with all the other ingredients going on in the world. They live a certain way. I kind of live that way too a little bit. They talk a certain way. I kind of talk that way too just a little bit. But I repent on Sundays and come to church and, you know, I'm good to go. But I blend right in. I just kinda, I'm just kind of fading in. Kind of dull. I don't really got flavor. I don't really stick out. But because I'm just kind of like, you know, blending in. Let me show you what that looks like. I need, I need four volunteers really quick. I don't know if we have four volunteers already picked. Um, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, Raymond, why don't you come on up? Um, anyone over here? Any volunteers over here? I need, I need a couple more. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead, come up. He's coming up right there. Yeah, yeah, come up, come up, come up. Come on right over here. Yeah, there's some stairs over there to the left. Oh, there, yeah, you can just jump right up too. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So why don't you, why don't you go stand over there? Um, you, yeah, you can stand. Uh, what's your name? Gabriel, all right, awesome. Yeah, you guys could, anyway, just pick a cup. Yeah, come on up. Just stand in front of a cup. You guys are good. Don't drink it, don't drink it, don't drink it. Don't drink it. Just leave it, leave it there. Leave the cup there, leave the cup there. They're eager, they're thirsty or something. You don't even know what's in the cup, I'm just saying. This is what it looks like to be salty. When I know I got salt and I got some flavor, there's, I stick out like a sore thumb. I'm not blending in with the crowd. I don't look like everybody else. I stand out. And everybody can see it. It's not a secret. Some of us have our Christianity a secret to everybody. 
Well, you're going to be able to tell which one of these is salty and which one is not. You'll see it right away. That's what I want you guys to do. I want you to just chug that water as fast as you can. At the count of three, grab your cup. Are we ready? Cheers. One, two, three. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. <laughs> Did you guys finish your cup? Let me see. Is your cup done? Oh, it's still working. Bring the camera close. Let me see. Are your, are your eyes watering? Let's see. Bring the cup. Show the cup. Show, show his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, let me ask you guys a question. Um, we're going to do a little poll. Is he salty? No, it wasn't him. Was he salty? It wasn't him. Was he salty? Was he salty? Yeah. You could see it right away. And that's the thing, when we're salty, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know there's something different about that person right there. There's something a little bit different about him. Everyone else kind of did their thing, they look kind of blended in, but I don't know, there's just something a little bit different about him. He walks different, he's got a different kind of lip, he's got a different swagger, something's different about him, he's got joy, he's got peace, he's got an answer. I know that if I can go to anybody, it's that guy right there. My, the, my family's messed up, I can go to that guy. I got problems in my household, I can go to him. I, I need prayer for my health, I know I can go to that guy, cause he sticks out, he's different, he got an answer, he got Jesus all up in him. That guy is salty. See, when we're salty, we got to stick out just like that. We should be sticking out like a sore thumb. We shouldn't be all blending in, looking like the crowd. We need to be the answer to a hurting and a broken and a dying world. It's up to us, church, to be the salt to this world. Give God some praise. You guys can be seated. Great job. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. You guys can be seated. So now, I want to talk about this question. Can we lose our saltiness? The answer is yes, we can. But I did a little bit of research. So I'm a little bit of a, um, like a nerd at heart. It's hard for me to say that, but it's true. You could ask my wife. Sometimes I'm just watching the most nerdiest videos of all time, like math problems that can't be solved. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I just, I'm sure your guys' perception of me just changed right now. Um, or maybe it was reinforced. You thought I was nerdy already. But here's a little, here's a little bit of a, a science fact. I did some research and I just, I wanted to kind of figure out, um, I wanted to figure out like what was, here's this, what, how does salt lose its flavor? So I look it up. Salt is composed of two elements, sodium and chloride. Sodium chloride. And I think you had a picture, but I, I don't, I'm not sure if I got it to the media team. Sodium chloride composed of two elements and it creates this, this thing called sodium chloride. But this, this element is extremely stable, extremely stable. They're so infused together, they become like one. Scientifically speaking, Salt cannot lose its flavor. When you look at the science behind sodium chloride, because the element is so stable, sodium chloride, it's impossible. It cannot lose its flavor. So I'm reading this and I'm thinking, these scientists don't know what they're talking about because Jesus said we could lose our flavor. So I did, I looked a little bit at it. I'm thinking, did Jesus not know what he was talking about? But he did. How does salt lose its flavor? I did a little more research. According to another article, for salt to lose its flavor, its saltiness, it would have to change its composition. You guys with me? The only way for salt to change its composition is for it to be diluted in something. Salt can't lose its flavor unless it changes to something else. The only way for salt to change into something else is if it's diluted in something. That's the only way. 
It's impossible for you to lose your flavor when you have Jesus. It's impossible for you to lose your flavor when the, out, the elements are connected. The only way we lose our flavor is when we begin to change our composition. We begin to change who we are by being diluted in something else. When we start blending with other elements, we start blending with things that start chemical reactions within us. When we start blending in sin, we start blending in false ideologies, we start blending in the world's way of thinking, we start to lose our flavor. The only way that a Christian can lose his flavor is this, by being deluded, by being a deluded Christian. That's the only way. I can't lose my flavor unless I become a deluded Christian. What does it mean to dilute? It means to make something weaker in force or value by modifying it or adding different elements to it. I can make the composition weaker by adding all kinds of different elements to it. So the question now is this, what does a deluded Christian look like? A deluded Christian, number one, has a deluded gospel. See, if we lose our message and we lose our mission, then we lost our flavor. We can talk about everything in the world. We can speak positively, but if we no longer preach or live the true gospel message, then that message no longer has powers in our, power in our lifestyles. Romans 1.16 says this, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation, salvation from his wrath and his punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as savior to the Jew first and also the Greek. I had a dream a long time ago. This was like in my really, really early, early stages of preaching. I had a dream I was preaching to a really, really large group of young adults. And as I was preaching to this group, I can see, and I'm preaching, I got my notepad out and everything. And all the, the whole crowd of people, they're dozing off, they're rolling their eyes, they're talking to each other, they look annoyed, they look bored out of their minds. They just look so like not connected. Like they want to leave. And in the middle of my sermon, one of the young adults stands up and shouts, we want the truth. We want the truth with the righteous anger. I close my notepad. I open the Bible up and I begin to preach the gospel. As I'm preaching, all the faces begin to start leaning in. They start sitting at the edge of their seat. They start crying. They start lifting their hands. They start jumping. They start shouting. They start getting excited. And they're saying, we want the truth. We want the truth. You know what that dream was? That was God telling me, the power is in the gospel. The power is in the word. The power is in my message. It's not in whatever you can try to come up with. It's not all your fancy opinions. It's not all these kind of lofty ideas or positive thinking. It's all in the gospel message. Jesus is saying this, my power is right here. But not only that, this is what God is saying. The world wants the truth. The world wants the gospel. The world wants what's real. They don't want a diluted version. They don't want your sample version. They don't want you to add or take away. The world wants who Jesus actually is, who he is, who he says he is. That's what the world wants. The world wants Jesus. We can't give the world a fake version of Jesus. We can't give the world a fake ideology, a twisted version of the gospel. We have to give the world who Jesus actually is. The power is in the gospel. Going back to Matthew 5, 13, it says, you're the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? Basically, it's saying when we lose our salt, we can't be used to season the world. We can't call ourselves Christians if we disagree with Jesus on everything. 
We cannot give Jesus to the world if we don't have Jesus in our hearts. We cannot make our own version of the gospel. The moment we start to add or to take away from what Jesus says, we begin to dilute the power of the gospel and we weaken the saltiness and we weaken the power of the message and we lose our saltiness. But there's nothing more stable, nothing more powerful, nothing more true than the gospel. And it all stands in this one name and that's the name of Jesus. It's in that name that is the power to save. It's in the name of Jesus that's the freedom from our sin. In the name of Jesus, it's the power of deliverance it's the power of grace it's the power of love it's the power of salvation and it's all in the name of Jesus in his name is everything we need it's everything that everyone else needs it's what the world actually wants they're hungry for the truth they desire someone with boldness to stand up and to say that Jesus is the only way Jesus is the one and only truth. And Jesus is the one and only true life. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Come on, give God praise if you agree with that. What else does a deluded Christian look like? A deluded Christian has a deluded love. A deluded love. Deluded love is something that's mixed with the world's idea of love. It forgives when it wants to forgive. It's, it's selective in who it, kind of, who it likes and who it doesn't like. Deluded love puts yourself in front of other people, your needs on top of everybody else. You become the center of your universe. You know that unforgiveness cuts us off from God. Look at Matthew 6, 15. But if you do not forgive others, Nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your father will not forgive your trespasses. You know that unforgiveness is one of the strongest elements to dilute your saltiness. When we carry unforgiveness in our heart, it begins to break down who we are called to be as believers, which are people that are called to forgive and to love. See, keeping unforgiveness in our heart keeps us from forgiveness. I'll say that again, keeping unforgiveness keeps you from forgiveness. What bitterness does to us, it makes us demonic, not salty. Bitterness, we begin to store up the enemy's elements in our lives. We begin to mix the love of Jesus in our lives for the bitterness and the grudges that we carry for other people. And as we do that, we begin to become a deluded Christian and we begin to break down our saltiness in this world. Ephesians 4.27 says, and do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. We bear demonic fruit when we hold a grudge or bitterness against others. We're supposed to bear spiritual fruit. We're supposed to bring life back into our homes, life back into our relationships, hope, the answer, Jesus. But as we begin to carry on to the grudges and unforgiveness, it dilutes our love and we no longer show or represent who Jesus actually is. You wanna know the scary thing about that? As that people begin to look at you and think that Jesus doesn't love them because they see a faulty version of love they think that Jesus isn't full of love because they see it in, in our lifestyle. See, when our love is diluted, our impact is halted. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. It says, starting verse, I believe it's two. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. In other words, you know what it's saying? If I was super, super talented, I could get up there and preach, I could sing, I could do all these things. But if I didn't love, my impact amounts to zero. See, a diluted love brings our impact from whatever it was down to zero. 
but you're super talented, but you can do all these things. You can do backflips for Jesus, but the impact is still zero because there's no love. See, the power is in the love of Jesus. It's not in how gifted we can be. But the moment we dilute our love, we, we, hit, we hinder and we halt our impact in this world. Number three, last point, a deluded Christian has a deluded purity. We can't reach those that we are just like. In other words, the unsalty can't season the unsalty. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4, three through five. It says, God wants you to be holy. He wants you to stay away from sexual sins. God wants each one of you to learn to control your own body. Use your body in a way that is holy and that gives honor to God. Don't let your sexual desires control you like the people who don't know God. Know what he's saying? We can't impact the world if we're living just like them. It's like when I was younger, they used to say, do as I, do as I say, not as I do. And it's like, we, we look at that saying and we think, oh, how silly is that saying? But the, but the reality is, if we're not careful, we live just like that. We have a lot of mouth service where we say, we, 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 we honor God with our lips, but our hearts and our walk and our actions and our ideas and the way we actually live life is far from God. What God is saying is a deluded Christian dilutes your purity. But what Jesus is saying is I can restore your purity. I can restore your faith. I can restore your life. I can give you back what you have lost. I can give you back what the enemy stole. I can, get, I can restore everything within you. But you need to come to me, stick with me, and live for me. And I will, I will give you I, everything. Just don't dilute your life. See, we as believers, our job is not to put on a show. Our job is not to pretend or to act. If that was the case, then we would all be just professional actors in the world. Our job is to love others, to love them, to bring salt to the world, to stand out for Jesus, to not blend in to not keep your faith a secret and to really stand up for who Jesus is. Today in this world, more than ever before, we need Christians that are gonna live for Jesus. We need Christians that are gonna be salty. And I believe that's you and me. I believe today is a day where we're making a decision as a church, where we're gonna live for Jesus and we're gonna allow him to empower us to be the salt that's gonna fertilize the world that's going to that's going to bring a, a, pr a preservation to his love that's going to love others that's going to make an impact that's going to change people's hearts that can, that's going to spread the gospel message and i believe that we're standing in a church today that all of us are here today those that are here and watching we're saying today that we're no longer going to live a deluded lifestyle i'm not going to let my life kind of be broken up by the world but i'm going to stand for jesus and i'm going to live set apart and holy unblemished not because of what i have done but because of what he has done in Jesus' name. How many are saying that today? You're saying, that's me. I want that life. Come on, if you receive anything tonight, just give God praise tonight. Let's all stand up to our feet. This is the moment we respond. It's the moment we say, God, it's time for me to turn back to you. Do me a favor, if you can, just hang tight at your seat. Hang tight at your seat for now. You can be standing, but just don't leave. Right now is an opportunity for us to get restored back to the place to be the vessel that God has called us to be. So your life has meaning, it has value. Someone say, my life has value. And some of you have said that, and maybe you didn't believe it. But the reality is this, Jesus loved you so much. The Father loved you so much. He saw your life as so valuable that he gave up his son in exchange for you. 
Your life has that much value. Worth dying for. Literally, you're worth dying for. And I believe that tonight, someone may be in here saying, I need, I need that back. I need that fire back. I need that drive back that conviction back. I need that saltiness back. I need, I need to stand up for Jesus. I've been diluting my life for too long. I've been kind of mixing my life with other ideas, other ways of thinking, but, but I need, I need to go all in for Jesus. I believe there's many of us. I, I, I stand here saying, you know what? That's me too. For too long, I've just been kind of been a little, a little too apathetic towards really sticking out for Jesus. But you know what I'm saying tonight? What I believe we're saying tonight? I'm done just kind of blending in with the world. I'm going to live for Jesus and let people know that Jesus absolutely loves you. And he has a plan for you. But the only way I can do it is in my lifestyle. So I want to ask you a question. If you're saying, I want that saltiness back. I want to stand out for Jesus. I don't want to be deluded anymore, but I want to become pure. I want to become all of God's and I want to become solely his. And I want to give my whole heart and life and decisions and actions totally and completely to him. Then when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and do it boldly and stick out in front of everyone in this church. And we're all going to clap for you. I'll count to three, one, two, Three, raise your hand. You're saying that's me. I see your hand, your hand, your hand. I see all those hands. Look at this. Come on, church. Let's clap it up. All those hands, all those hands right now. I see all those hands. This is what I want you guys to do. All of you who just raised your hand, I want to congratulate you. We're going to applaud you like crazy. I want you to come out of your seat. Come up here. We're going to pray with you. We're going to stand in the gap with you. Come on. If you raise your hand tonight, come on up to the front. We're going to pray with you tonight. We're going to tonight now you may not just be saying look I want it you may be saying I need to I need to surrender my heart to Jesus tonight it might be the first time you came to a church in a long time it might be the first time you're listening to a service in a long time now I want you to make this decision tonight do you want to welcome Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior which means this are you ready to allow him to forgive you? Are you ready to allow him to set you free from bondage, from sin and from death? He can do that tonight. See the wages or the price of our sin, the things we've done is death. But what Jesus came to do when he came to this earth is pay that price for you and me. So you're standing here today hearing this message and the message is simple. It said, God loves you so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him won't perish, but will have everlasting life. If today you're saying, I wanna repent, which means I wanna turn away from my old lifestyle and I wanna give my heart completely to Jesus. Then at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand tonight. You could be up here too, that could be you. The count of three, one, two, three, raise your hand. You're saying, that's me. I wanna give my heart completely to Jesus. Is there anybody that's out there that didn't come up? Anybody else? You're saying, that's me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I see all those hands. Come on, let's clap it up for everyone that's giving a heart. If you raise your hand and you're not up here, I want to invite you to come join us up in the front. We might need a lot more prayer warriors up here. P12 leaders and altar workers. P12 leaders, we need you up here. Everyone who's up here, I want you to pay attention to me for a quick second. We have a class. The class is designed to help you grow in your relationship with God. 
It's literally designed to help you be salty, to live for Jesus, how to bring Jesus into your everyday life, how to stand for him. You learn the, pr the principles and the foundations of your faith. It's like the, the best tools you can have, the best weapons. Just imagine you're being sent to war and we wanna take you into the, the, the room where you can pick up all your weapons, as many weapons as you want. Would you go? Yeah, I'm not gonna show up empty handed to the war field. We wanna give you everything, every tool, every resource. And it's this class, it's called Starting at the Way. Say it with me, say Starting at the Way. This Starting at the Way class, you, the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you, but they're also gonna help you sign up. They have a card or they have the app, the app. They're gonna help you sign up for this class and we're gonna get you ready and we're gonna get you set up and we're gonna train you and disciple you, help you get baptized and you're gonna be ready and you're gonna grow and you're never gonna turn back in Jesus' name. I want everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my heart completely to you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for being a deluded Christian. I, I've blended in. I've allowed the world into my heart. But from this day forward, I'm gonna live for you, Jesus. I'm standing for you. I give my heart completely to you. I believe in you. Thank you for loving me and for forgiving me. You are now the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Say this with me. Say, I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so I can be saved. From this day forward, I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.